former Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been talking at the Atlantic Council in Washington, where he urged the United States to send its fighter jets to Ukraine, saying it's the humane thing to do. He also dismissed the argument that the Ukrainians would not be able to fly the F-16 planes, for instance, and would require training in order to do so. Well, it's understood that he was not acting on behalf of Number 10, but uh, speaking as a, a private individual. Let's get the views now of Mike Hewitt, retired Rear Admiral uh, in the US Navy, joining us. Uh, Mike, thank you very much for your time. Uh, just, firstly, on that point that Boris Johnson made, one assumes that the Ukrainians used to sort of flying Soviet-era MiGs would require some pretty heavy input on, on what to do with a, a sophisticated aircraft like the F-16. Oh, thanks for having me. I, I don't think I would have any concern about the Ukrainians learning how to man, train, and equip F-16s. They've proven that they can operate quite quickly advanced technologies in the space. And so um, they're a very experienced fighting force. They've got a very robust air force. They've demonstrated their ability to not only safely operate the plane, but but use it expeditiously in their campaign against Russia. So I uh, believe what the prime minister is saying is absolutely accurate. And uh, I also support his push to get these fighter planes into the hands of the Ukrainians. What would they do, however, and, and we, we pick up that uh, phrase fighter planes. I mean, I assume that in terms of the Biden administration saying no, they wouldn't want to see these things going into dogfights with, with Russian MiGs. Well, ultimately, you already have this this issue of, of command of the skies. And, and one of the things that I was disappointed in over a year ago was when the UK and the US determined what they wouldn't do in support of Ukraine, such as a, a no-fly zone, such as putting aircraft over the skies of Ukraine. But at a minimum, we should be able to equip the Ukrainians to defend their own airspace in that regard. And, and certainly, you're going to see tactical engagements with the Russians, but you're actually seeing that today um, with devastating consequences for civilian lives. So I would highly encourage us to uh, equip this military with what it needs and ultimately resource the victory that we've been discussing um, we'd like to see happen in Ukraine for the last year. Uh, and of course, we remember those arguments about the no-fly zones uh, going back to the Balkans conflict. And um, one would think that perhaps uh, aerial superiority means you can actually do something about any kind of Russian spring offensive with the armor coming over the tanks and so on. Yeah, the, the advanced fighters of today really aren't um, equipped to be in that kind of dogfight that we think about from the 20th century. They're really designed to be over the horizon, delivering missiles, defending airspace, defending the land beneath, beneath them. So it's not like you're going to see the kind of tactical engagement that many of us seen in the movies. This yeah. is really about delivering um, advanced weaponry at long distances and protecting the homeland. So cruise missiles rather than Tom Cruise, then maybe is, is the approach. But um, <laughs> right. yeah. just looking at the, at the political aspect of this, I guess the problem is that they can be seen as offensive rather than defensive. And, and the White House really rather cautious about that message that's sending to the Kremlin. Well, we've, we've been shooting behind the target with respect to Ukraine ever since the war began. And my frustration has been we could have stopped this from ever happening had we demonstrated the kind of resolve that we now seem to have in our political circles. And, and so, yes, these are offensive weapons, but this is not a defense of, of the homeland. This is about protecting the homeland. Yeah. And uh, what Putin will understand is strength on strength. And I think that's the best deterrent we can possibly support for Ukraine right now. OK, and I know the uh, intelligence analysis is going on at the moment, but what do you believe could be the strength of any kind of Russian spring offensive? Uh, have, have they got the kit and the manpower to actually mount that? They absolutely do. And I think, unfortunately, what Putin understands is the long game here. Mm. And, and really what he's playing upon is the lack of political resolve. That's his best weapon right now in the U.S. with the Republicans, here in, in the U.K. with the discussions about resourcing the war. Yeah. This is exactly what Putin wanted, was a, a political infight by which we would limit the amount of support we would give the Ukrainians. So his spring offensive is really waiting for us to walk away from the conflict.